Hey, what's going on dudes? My name is TDC and welcome back to some more FTB Infinity Evolved Expert Mode here on the FTOG server. Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic today. I, I've really, I've just been waiting. <laughs> guys, I have been waiting and waiting and waiting for this Iridium to replicate from last episode, but we are getting close and let me tell you how I did it. <laughs> so I was working up here while I was waiting. It's just taking forever. And I decided to do some crafting and stuff like that, try to tidy up around the place, get some things working a little bit more efficiently. So I decided to come up here and work on our tree farms. Okay, so we set this up. We had the rubber tree farm set up before, and it's just your basic MFR tree farm, right? I exchanged all the flux ducts and the stuff like that with uh, item ducts or item conduits from Ender.io. So they're all running up underneath. It makes it a lot more compact and a lot neater. Um, but yeah, so we got this all upgraded. Everything here is going to this side. And then we got a normal oak tree farm going to this side. So we got plenty of woods for our woodsy needs. Um, but it was going really slow. So I decided to upgrade the solar panel that was up here. We got this guy right here, the redstone solar panel. And I was like, oh, that's cool. This thing works really quickly now, right? This gives way more than enough power. You can see up there in the top, it makes, I think... Uh, let's take a look real quick at the solar. This one does 64 RF per tick and it transfers 128 RF per tick. So this is plenty of power for these two farms here. We could probably even add another couple of farms here and we still have plenty of power. So I was like, okay, that's cool. I'll make another one because I need some way to charge my jetpack. I got tired of throwing this in the uh, energetic infuser every now and then, even though we do have two. I was like, this is just easier. So we made up another one, craft this with an iron helmet and it gives you a redstone solar helmet. Sweet. So I was like, okay, we made those two. It really wasn't that bad. It was just a lot of crafting, a lot of crafting. <laughs> so I was like, okay, I have nothing but time because I don't really have anything else to do. We have a few more steps to get to the controller, but I needed a way to speed the whole Iridium process up. Not by much, but by a little bit. So I spent the last couple of days crafting, doing all, all kinds of crafting, <laughs> and I made this guy. We made the advanced solar panel from Solar Expansion. This guy is amazing. So if we come in here, we take a look at this guy here. This generates 4,000 RF per tick. It transfer 8,192 RF per tick, which is absolutely insane. This guy is super quick. Um, now, the sad thing is, is we're using it just for this Iridium replication. Sounds like a nightclub in here, man. Little the DJ's kind of drunk or something. I don't know. He's he's off rhythm there, but uh, yeah. So now that we have this all hooked up to this power in here, everything is keeping up, which is amazing. Check it out. We got 64 iridium. If we take a look in here, we have 61. We are so close to having the two stacks. I hope it's just two stacks that we need for the controller. Um, so I'm hoping by the end of today's episode, we should be able to craft this guy up and actually have AE online, but. I guess we'll see. Whoa, come back here, man. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and throw that back up there. But yeah, so if we take a look inside the replicator here, the mass fabricator, look how fast this progress bar is going up now. As compared to going here, we'll take the solar panel off real quick. And the nice thing about this is now that I've crafted it, I have it. So we can use this for other things later on. We can use this to power like the quarry or something, something that we need like mobile power for. Um, which really isn't that big of a deal, but look how slow this goes without it. So this is just running off of um, these generators here. Actually, those generators there, and it looks like we're out of power. Yeah, so this one, yeah, I don't know. This, this is fun. This is cool and all, but this guy right here creates like, I'd say like 15 times more power than this thing does. <laughs> and this was a little bit more work, but it's a lot more convenient because I keep having to like mess with this and try to figure it out and I just don't think it works very well it looks really cool but it's just not very convenient so I went ahead I went through the trouble of crafting this guy and it is up and going which is awesome so let's just go ahead and throw this guy back on this tesseract down here and I've got it down here 
just so we can look at it and I made these cool little trapdoor things here too so you can't tell it's down there and it still works because these are transparent blocks so yeah it's kind of nice and hidden hidden power uh, but yeah so that is super exciting I'm super glad that I got that up and going because we are so close so close to having everything that we need for the AE controller which I'm super pumped about because I feel like we've been spending the last like thousand episodes on that and it's driving me crazy because I want to get on to doing other things but I just need a better way of crafting things and my storage here is getting kind of crazy um, you can see in here that I've done a little bit of updating adjusting and different things like that so I've upgraded a couple of our machines to the resonant and I say upgraded but really I just made brand new ones so we had the resonant machine frames we had a couple left of them I think that was our last two yep um, so I made a new pulverizer with the resonant and the redstone furnace and I actually made two sets of upgrades thinking that this is what we needed for the aqueous accumulators in there or the igneous extruders excuse me but those weren't what we needed for those machines so I just had these upgrades laying around and I threw these guys on here and as far as I can tell these do not run the power dry now I haven't been running like everything all at once this is kinda of just like we run them as we need them but this is this thing is amazing so if we take some let's just take some of this extra iron dust in here we'll throw that in there look how fast that is <laughs> so we have all our ore processing online now which is awesome and uh, basically the reason that I set this whole thing up is because I was running out of room well, I actually, I ran out of room, so I upgraded all these barrels, but um, I've been running the quarry up there, and I had a ton of ores up in this chest here, and I needed to process them, and it was just taking forever with the basic machines. So the problem with that is, if we come in here, I think it's this one, you can't actually upgrade these. So if we look at uses with this, it says that you can upgrade these, but you can't. So if we come back in here, here's the resonant one here. If we take an enderium gear and four pieces of sil sil <laughs> silver, uh, just set up just like this, it doesn't work. So you can't upgrade the machine once you've already made it apparently. So you only can craft like the resonant version. So if we look at pulverizer, um, you come in here, it gives you a bunch of different recipes, or I guess it's the same recipe, but just with the upgraded machine frames. So this is the only way to do it. So, oh, I forgot that I had music turned on. <laughs> We're going to rock the music for a little bit. Hopefully that works okay with you guys. But uh, I miss the Minecraft music. I haven't been hearing it in a while. So, um, but yeah. So, we've got everything that we're going to need for the controller. We've got the Iridium cooking. We've got just about everything. Now, the last piece to this puzzle is the Galgadorian metal. This stuff, man, is expensive. And I think it's going to take like a total of nine blocks of diamond, which is okay. We have that. It's not that big of a deal. We've got the glowstone from the witch farm at spawn. We've got the ender pearls, the blaze rods that we need for the ender, eyes of ender. We've got the blaze rods that we're going to need for the magma cream because we got plenty of slime balls since my base is in a slime chunk. Lots of these guys. I think that should be enough, but if it's not, then... I could just turn off some of these lamps and farm some of these slimes for a little while, but not really that big of a deal. But the last thing that we need is gas tears. These I do not have. So this is going to be an issue. We're going to have to set up a farm or something with these guys going on. Um, I like the music. Let's just turn it down just a little bit. Let's go with like 20%. I think that should be good uh, but yes yeah, so we have the auto spawner here which we can use with the safari nets and we've got plenty of mob juice coming from the skeleton farm over there so that's not that big of a deal the only thing that I do not have at this point right now is an actual ghast so we got to go hunting and we got to go to the nether I have hardly been to the nether nether so far in this pack and I don't know it's gonna be kind of dangerous I need to grab some quartz while we're there because I'm just about out of nether quartz from the first run that I did a long long time ago and I think it's gonna be beneficial for us to grab some more while we're in here but so let's go into the nether hopefully we can find gas and see what's going on I don't know if I've actually been through this port no I have been it takes me to somebody else's yeah so I think this is mistakens oh Nicole oh, Nicole W's portal Nicole BW's portal. Yeah, so we gotta fly around. Oh my god! What was that? Oh, that scared me. Okay. 
So we gotta go find that guy, wherever he is, and try to capture him. Oh, there he is! Look at him. Alright. So let's see if we can speed up next to him. Oh! Come here, guy! Oh, there we go, we got him. Okay, so that was a little, little easier than I expected. <laughs> but yeah, so I think I'm gonna spend a little bit of while, a little while in here. I need to gather up some of this nether quartz, man, because I'm going to need it for our AE system. And uh, I don't really have any as of right now. So yeah, I'm gonna spend a little bit, gather up some of this stuff. I may try to find a little bit more cobalt so we can upgrade our tools. Oh, that's the music. <laughs> Playing with the music is gonna be weird. Uh, but yeah, so I'm gonna spend a little bit of time in here get some stuff that we need and I will meet you guys back at the base alright dudes so we had a successful run now I've got the quartz up in here let's actually go ahead and toss all that stuff in there uh, throw those in there too I don't know where those came from but that's okay yeah so we got like two two and a quarter stacks or yeah two and a quarter stacks in nether quartz which is not that bad we also got I found a little bit of this saltpeter ore which I've been running across that I needed the niter and I've just been pulverizing sandstone for niter and that's a really bad way of doing it so I figured I'd grab that while I found it uh, but yeah so our main prize was the ghasts and we got this guy now we just need to find a spot to set up this spawner and I'm wondering if we should kind of set up this area here for mob spawners because I do want to set up a couple of spawners now that I do have my portal gun we can actually pick spawners up <laughs> um, pick spawners up using the G key just like this you can actually pick up any block that you want and move them around so we could actually set up a few spawners and things like that with this and I think we may set up one for witches so we have redstone and glowstone um, and <laughs> The only thing I don't like about the potato one is it talks, but uh, the potato one just looks cooler to me than the pork chop thing. But we also set up some custom colors too. We had an issue when I first made my portal gun. We I was breaking uh, Brink's portals. We got Link and Brink, and it's kind of confusing me a little bit. <laughs> um, but I was messing up his portals because I was setting up the same color, and apparently it doesn't just stick to your player. It doesn't use your player ID. It actually just carries across to the rest of the server. So we went into the config, and I set up these two custom colors. So it was like a teal and a seafoam green, which uh, I think looks pretty cool. I like these colors, so it makes for interesting-looking portals. I like it. Um, but yeah, so I think we may set up this area here for spawners. So since we've already got our skeleton spawner up here, let's go take a look at this real quick. This guy has been running, and this thing is full. So we've got 256 buckets of this mob essence stuff. Got tons of stuff in here, which I need to do some, I think next episode, we're gonna play around with enchantments, hopefully. Uh, Cause one of these, this one right here has soul bound on it. I wanna see if I can get this off of it and copy a couple of books with soul bound so we can add soul bound to some of our things here. Maybe, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, so I guess now that I'm thinking about it, we could actually move this spawner if we needed to as well. <laughs> now that we uh, have the portal gun but yeah so I guess I'm gonna take a little bit I'm gonna kind of figure out where we want to set things up at and uh, we'll be back in a little bit alright so here's what I'm thinking we will probably set up chambers along this way we can dig straight out this way later on if we ever need to but yeah so we're right over here we're close to all our machines and everything like that so if we ever want to automate or send items back to this we actually can I guess that's not really that big of a deal either way, but let's go ahead and move these guys. Um, I've been doing a lot of the AgriCraft stuff because I talked a little bit about wanting to set up some power. So I got a bunch of stuff here. These are actually all the ingredients that you need to make this presser, which is kind of annoying. So if we look at the recipe for this, it takes an asparagus seed, celery seed, cabbage seed, and oats seed with uh, some iron and a piston. Not really that big of a deal, but you can't interchange these seeds which I think is kind of annoying <laughs> so some of these I had some of them I didn't and I actually had to go out and find them all and basically what I did was I how do you want to call them I agro crafted them up to 10 10 tens so we can make a bunch of those seeds to make a bunch of pressers but I don't know if we're gonna go that route we may just jump straight into big reactors after a while because once our iridium is done we can actually throw some pellets of RTG fuel in there and just kind of let it do its thing 
it would take a lot longer than it is for the ir iridium but maybe that's not really that bad of a thing because I was looking at our uh, plutonium storage right now we still have quite a bit and I've got a bunch that needs to be processed into the plutonium or the tiny piles of plutonium but with what we have right here we have enough to make nine pellets of RTG fuel and with that we can actually make a control rod we can actually make nine control rods from uh, big reactors where are the control rods <laughs> uh, rod oh that's not gonna help us is it uh, big reactors let's just look up big reactors there it is this guy right here your yellorium fuel rod not control rod uh, but yeah so with this stuff and just some hardened glass that gives us one and we could do a nine like a three by three pattern with that and we could cover it with endurium and then just enclose it with the casing and stuff like that and I think that would produce just as much as that one solar panel makes so I'm not sure if we want to do that or not I don't know it, it seems worth it to me but I don't know we'll have to see what's going on but anyways let's get back to the task at hand I think what we're gonna do is we're just going to set up some rooms and stuff in here so we want to come out this way hopefully we don't bust in anything I don't know what all this stuff is here Oh, that's to our old uh, branch mine, which I'm not using anymore. So that's not the big of a deal. We can cover all this up. So I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of dig out a spot for this, and then we'll come back and try to hook everything up. All right. So I think we've got everything we're going to need. Let's do this. We need this and this. No, wait. How does this work? What do we need? Aluminum brass. Oh, uh, and then that's bronze. Okay. Um, aluminum brass. How do we make that stuff? Brass. Let's see. Molten aluminum brass. And this is aluminum and copper. So let's grab some copper here. And uh, do I have one set up for aluminum? I do. Okay, cool. So we'll just toss this in here. Let's do half of that like so and then we'll just set up this ingot cast we'll let that get cooking and then we'll come over here we'll start setting everything up oh my god that scared me oh <sighs> I saw the this thing and I saw that and I thought it was an actual skeleton <laughs> um, okay so I have this little room we're gonna try this I don't know how well it's gonna work because I think ghasts are four by five or five by four so if we put the spawner here this should be just enough room for this guy to spawn so we're gonna try it and we're gonna see what happens I don't know if this is gonna be enough room or not but I think we should be okay so we're gonna put our drum uh, let's do our drum here and then we are going to put in this guy here I'm thinking that should transfer power but I don't remember how I did that before I think that should work and let's come over here we're gonna go grab the spawner Whoop. Um, oh we need a grinder too don't we okay I got it <laughs> no worries I have it um, let's grab our tesseract here and we'll put the grinder kind of over on the side so if we put the grinder here Let's grab that, we'll throw the tesseract down in here, and then we'll put the grinder in like so. Um, or we can not do it. Let's see. We're gonna need to get the items out of here, so I'll just probably run some cable this way. Yeah, that'll work. Um, now if we grab our precision sledgehammer. We should be able to see the radius of this thing and it looks like it's all the way enclosed in this room so that's good if I come in here okay so it is a 5 by 4 complete area there so that's cool that works that should be fine um, now if we put this guy here like so it's already got energy in it now if we set this thing up here we got villagers in there right now so we'll see if this actually works we'll do extract without a signal okay probably gonna want to turn this thing off really quickly though let's see is it actually gonna work no 
Unless it's at spawning them somewhere else. <laughs> Hello? This is kind of cheap right at the moment. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to set up some drawbridges and stuff right here. And then we can actually put in the fused quartz, which I'm making up as well. So we can kind of block this whole thing off, and so he shouldn't be able to blast his way out of it. But this thing isn't working. Should be working. Why you no work? I don't know. Okay, so we'll just leave that be. We'll come back in a minute. I think it should work. Should fine. Or should should work fine. <laughs> um, it shouldn't be that big of a deal. So let's grab some of this aluminum brass. There we go. Now if we come over here, we can trade these guys out like this. Sweet. And do we have two more? Did that not work? What? Really? Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to have to cook up some more of this stuff and then uh, we'll try to get it all hooked up. Okay, so we've got just about everything set up here. Um, I have been playing around this for a little while and I can't get it to work. It's spawning really, really slowly and I think we can speed it up by moving the auto spawner here instead of having it there in the wall. I think what was happening is it was like cutting the spawning radius in half. So every time it said it could spawn something, it might have said it could spawn over there, but it couldn't because it was all blocked. And then every now and then we were getting some spawns here. So we've got a few gas tiers here, but it was taking a really long time. So we're going to try to move this guy around just a little bit and see what happens. So let's set our generator up right next to it, like so. Put that there. We'll throw some charcoal in there, or coal. So, so it's got plenty of power still. This guy is feeding it, I think, hopefully. And let's go ahead and cover all of this back up because I don't want him to wreck the redstone for the door. And I think we should be able to just, yeah. We should be able to set our drum down there like so. And if we put this guy here like that and we'll do extract without a signal. So that should be going in there. We'll set this one to insert just in case. Uh, but yeah, so that should that should be everything that we need right there. So we can go ahead and throw this guy back in there. Come out here, we'll close the door, and we'll see if this spawns a little bit faster. Because this thing ran for about five minutes, we only got two ghasts. And the interesting thing is we're getting two tiers per ghast, which is a little strange. I'm not complaining, that's okay, but it just seems a little weird. <laughs> but I don't know so it looks like this is maybe spawning a little faster we'll see so we'll give it a test between now and the next one so that took about what like 15 20 seconds for the first one to spawn oh that is much faster that is so much faster okay so it seems like it's a random chance for gas tears we got one from one of those dudes and we got two from the other one yeah. Oh, dude, this is so good. All right, so now we just need to kind of hang out, let this thing do its thing. And uh, I'm probably going to make another one of these generators and take it up to the skeleton spawner. That way, is this thing going to clog up with juice? Does the grinder clog up with juice? I can't remember. I may have to fix some issues here, but I'm going to let this thing do its guy, or let this guy do its thing. <laughs> and uh, collect up a whole bunch of these gas tiers so we can make the Gal Gadorian metal. Alright, so this thing is going pretty good. We got 23 gas tiers so far. That's not nearly enough, but while that thing is running, I guess we can go ahead and start crafting up everything else we're going to need. So, we need in total 18 of these lumps of Gal Gadot to make the large lump of Gal Gadot, which we can then smelt those down into the enhanced Gal Gadorian metal. Uh, this stuff is kind of rough, man. So diamond blocks, no big deal. We've got those. It's all good. So we need nine, nine, nine diamond blocks, <laughs> right? Um, we're going to need 18 of the stabilized metal 
and then whatever whatever the math is on the glowstone and the eyes of Gal Gadot. So this is what we're waiting to craft right now. I'm going to have to wait for the gas tiers, and I may have to go back to spawn to see if they have any blaze rods to mix up with the slime balls that we got. So not really that big of a deal, along with the eyes of Ender. The fermented spider eye, I think that we have everything. Let's go see how many brown mushrooms we have. We should have quite a bit because that's what I was growing before. Um, if we come in here, let's just look. Did you guys see any? We've got a bunch here. Take these guys. Um, do we have any sugar cane in here? I don't know if it'll go in here or not. So, let's see. We may have to grow up some sugar cane, which isn't that big of a deal. Yeah, so it doesn't look like we have that in have that much anyway. Let's come down here and take a look. Uh, got a little bit of sugar. Got some more of this. We'll go ahead and craft these down like so. We'll do spider eye, that, and sugar. And that'll give us 64 fermented spider eyes. I don't know if that'll be enough or not. Um, I'm also having to make this raw hardener stuff from Steve's Carts 2 for the stabilized metal here. So this recipe is kind of expensive. Um, we do get five per, so that helps out quite a bit. But for each one of these, you have to make the raw hardener. And that takes one diamond and four obsidian, which gives you two of the raw hardeners. So we don't need a whole, whole bunch of this stuff. But I may not have enough here. We'll just kind of have to see. So we need to take this stuff. Where is it? Here. So we're going to need a total of how many? So maybe just two to start off with. That's not going to be nearly enough, but we can at least get it going. So these go here, and then it is iron and three of these refined hardeners. So let's do that, and then we'll grab a stack of iron, like so. And that'll give us five, ten. Yeah, so we may need one more. I think <laughs> I don't know I'm um, not real sure what on the math is I'm just kind of going off of a uh, hand here so I guess we're getting closer I just need to wait a little bit more than that a little over half a stack of gas tiers so far and it's only been going for about like 15 minutes so not bad man not bad all right we should have all right dudes check it out we should have enough right here. If my math is correct, we need 27 of these dudes here to split up between here, and that should give us nine. That'll give us an 18 total of these things. And so if we take these guys, do this, and then we can smelt these. Oh, oh we did it. <laughs> oh man, that is an involved recipe. So now we've got everything that we're going to need. Uh, let's go check on our iridium. Are we about done? I'm hoping that we're done. Let's head into the nightclub here. Ooh, it's quiet. What's going on? <gasps> it's done. Okay. Uh, let's turn this guy off. So he is not creating any more UU matter. Okay. Now, <laughs> uh, see you, dude. Let's see. Do we have everything that we're going to need for this? We still need the nether stars. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I think we're going to do this today, man. I was going to save it for next episode, but the faster we get this done, the faster we can move on to some different things. Um, okay, so I'm going to give you a rundown of what I need to do, and I'm going to do it off camera. I need to make a new weapon because I accidentally trash canned my sword, which I have nothing that has looting on it. So I think I'm going to make one of the magical wood cleavers. So if we do this guy here, the magical wooden cleaver. Uh, whoa, what? Yeah, so anyways, magical wood stuff is just made from uh, enchanted books and, let's see, magical magical wood. Enchanted books, gold, and bookshelves. So, not really that big of a deal, just a lot of crafting on my end. And uh, the cleaver gives you, like, I think it should give you a 100% chance of beheading. 
So we should be able to just go in and kill a bunch of wither skulls and, and get skulls for each kill. I hope, I think. Um, what else do we need to do? I need to craft down all the stuff here. Oh, we need to throw some more glowstone in there to get the rest of this uh, vibrant uranium going. That stuff goes pretty quick, so that shouldn't be that big of a deal. Um, we have the advanced alloys somewhere. I crafted up two stacks of this. Hopefully that's enough. And let's look at the plates. R uh, iridium. Iridium. There we go. This guy right here, and it takes some diamonds. We may not have enough diamonds. I may... Oh, balls, man. I think we need two stacks of these things. No. It should just be at one... Oh, man. I don't know. I'm going to try to make this if I have enough... Oh, man. I'm kind of crunched for time. Uh, okay, I'm going to see what I can get done, and we'll be right back. <laughs> Alright, dude. This is stupid. Um, I made the magical wooden cleaver... I made the entire thing out of magical wood. It took forever to get all the levels we needed, but hey, we did it, right? So, yeah, this thing comes right off the bat with 11 modifiers. So I was able to throw some obsidian and ender pearls on there to get the beheading up. up. <laughs> yeah, um, so you can see that it starts off at 20%. I put it on there. I think like six times or something like that it goes up 10% every time and we got it up to beheading 10 which I believe is I don't know I think it's like a hundred and ten percent chance I really didn't need to do that I just wanted to see how high it would go um, and it stopped the beheading 10 so this guy is insane for every kill we get a skull how cool is that um, now the only problem on this is it does have a durability which we'd have to replace with uh, magical wood So we got a couple extra pieces here that will probably save if we ever need to repair this um, But I don't know if we ever will but now we have a total of 17 wither skeleton skulls, which is crazy So now we can go take on the wither. We're gonna have to kill him with this sword, too uh, Which only does seven hearts of damage <laughs> <laughs> the damage isn't very high on this guy. Um, I did want to replace or try to replace it with uh, an Endurium blade to get the higher damage, but you can't actually replace parts in this. I thought you could, but apparently you can't. I don't know, because it says modifiable, but I don't really know what that means. Maybe we just can't do that in this pack. I'm not real sure, but yeah. Anyway, so we're going to give it a go. Um, I believe that there is a wither killing box somewhere around spawn. I'm going to have to gather up some soul sand before we go, but I'm going to try to find that area, and then uh, we'll bring you guys back in. Aha! Here it is. Took a little while to find this guy, but this should be the place. So, um, we're going to see if we can do this. I don't think it should be a problem, <laughs> but I guess we'll see. Um, so we need a block to get in here and place the skulls, so let's do this, man. We'll do one, two, <gasps> three. All right. So let's hope it doesn't escape or destroy the landscape. I think we should be all set. Oh, he's angry. Oh, he's taking damage. He's like suffocating. Okay, I don't know if that's supposed to be happening or not. It doesn't look like he's escaping. But we'll go with it. Okay, so he's almost dead. <laughs> oh, I gotta do this a few more times. What just blew up? That was weird. I don't know what happened. Something else just blew up. All right, sweet. So, um, yeah, that kind of got me nervous because I do not want this guy to get loose, like, at all. Because I do not have the armor, nor do I have the weapons that can actually take care of him. So, yeah. Um, I need to ask. I'm going to ask Razgul if he's supposed to be taking suffocation damage because I do not think he's supposed to be. 
But yeah, so I'm gonna get this done and then I'll meet you guys back over at the base. Ugh, dudes, are you ready for this? I don't think you're ready. I think maybe we should just chill for a little bit. Maybe wait to build it next episode. Or maybe a couple episodes from now. <laughs> yeah, right. All right, dudes. This is it. <gasps> there it is. Oh, it's so good. Okay, now where did I put the rest of everything? It's in here somewhere. Uh. What? what wait, what? Oh, no, it's on the wall. Duh. <laughs> oh. There it is. Dudes! It is done. Let's gather everything here. We are going to hook this bad boy up. We're going to make it. We're not going to hook it up. Uh, there's two. This episode's gone on for way too long. So, we're going to put that there. These here. This right there in the middle. We got one extra nether star, too. We had enough for five kills. <gasps> Emmy controller we did it oh we did it <laughs> so good so good um okay so where can we hook this up at I think we can just probably hook it up to this guy for right now let's grab my wrench we're going to pop this off of there now the thing about this guy is it takes RF power to create AE power right so normally you need an energy acceptor or a controller and the recipe is basically the same it just takes a couple of different processors instead of the uh, the ones that we use the calculation processors so but the good thing about this guy you to take power oh look at you you're so beautiful <laughs> um, the thing about this guy is we can actually draw channels off of this thing so this is actually the easier method to get started um, with AE so if for whatever reason we need an energy acceptor later on we can possibly make one But with this guy, this is going to allow us to do so much stuff, man Oh my goodness. It is so good to see this thing um, So I actually have no idea how long this episode has been going on for it feels like it's been going on for years But I'm not real sure how much energy does this draw? Not very much like 15 RF a tick or something yeah, that ain't bad. But, uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap up the episode here, dudes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. It was, oh, man, this has been a long time coming. But we finally got it. Now we can work on setting up our AE system. So i tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to avoid working on AE on camera for a while. Um, at least until we start setting up, like, the auto crafting and things like that. But what I am going to do is I'm going to make a crafting terminal and some storage. So some of the drives and everything like that. I'm going to get that going. That way we have it. You don't have to see me sit here wasting time on AE anymore. We can get rid of all these chests here and we'll have so much storage. You won't believe it, man. It's going to be amazing. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that like button for me down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you guys in the next episode, all right? Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace. Oh, this is so good.